So, hello YouTube. Um, as some of you may know, I've been working on a modification to my telescope, um, uh, which is a Conus equatorial mount, and I want to be able to make this into a go-to mount, computer controlled and able to track uh, objects in the sky automatically. So, uh, some of you may have seen the first video in which I actually demonstrated these motors, uh, which are DC motors with encoders uh, attached to the rear shaft. Uh, I demonstrated how I was going to control them and the Arduino circuit, um, the basic circuit of the Arduino. And uh, so I've progressed a little from that stage. And so in this video, I want to share uh, the modifications I've done to that, uh, the things I've added on to it. And um, as we go along, uh, you'll understand the, the different software and hardware features that I've added uh, to this setup. Uh, to get one step closer to the to the ultimate goal of a ch of uh, controlling these uh, telescope motors uh, from the computer. Okay, so um, there's already uh, part one of this video series uh, out there, which is the Conus modification part one. So I would recommend that you watch that before watching this, so that you you have a, a vague understanding of you know what exactly this this whole setup is supposed to do. Right. That uh, having said that, um, let me just describe the components here. So we obviously have two uh, motors, uh, and these have encoders on them, shaft encoders. So I'm able to read the position of these motors. One of them is for the declination axis, so that you see here, DEC, and uh, this one is for the RA axis, so for the right ascension axis. So this is the RA motor. All right. Up here we have um, an Arduino, Arduino Uno is down here and on top of it is mounted a motor shield and this motor shield uh, is what um, directs the current to the two motors, okay. Um, so if you ever used a motor shield like this, uh, this is I think a 10 amps per channel motor shield. Um, uh, but it's very similar to an L293D or an L298N um, uh, DC motor shield. Uh, basically, it's um, it's as simple as you know uh, turning you know turning the polarity of the motor on or off, and then a third pin for each motor, which controls the uh, the PWM output. And according to that, uh, the shield then decides what voltage to feed to the motor. Okay, uh, but more about that. When we get into the software, you'll figure it out. So that's what this is all about. Um, and this, all this was existing in the previous setup. But if you look now, I have added this. So let's have a look at this little thing here. So this is basically, you can see there, it's just four potentiometers, right? Um, uh, which are connected by this mass of cables. Um, you know, obviously when I when I uh, sort of um, formalize everything up, I'll get rid of this uh, setup and probably make it a lot more neat. But for now, the output of the four potentiometers, you can see them. This is the output here, the four potentiometers. So the the brown, the white, the yellow, and the red cable. Each of them is from the center pin of these four potentiometers, right? And uh, that's feeding into the into four analog pins here on the Arduino. So this shield just plugs into the Arduino down below and uh, I'm get, taking the four um, potentiometer outputs um, over here. Okay, uh, This is incoming 12 volt DC power supply to the shield and over here on this side if you look at the shield, um, if I can just turn that a little bit get things out of the way, there you are. So each motor, so two terminals for the RA motor over here. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, two terminals for the RA motor and two terminals for the uh, declination motor. And these are just, uh, these are controlled uh, via the PWM pins and the polarity pins. Um, but that that will become clear when I show you the software. And uh, these leads just go directly to the motors. Okay. Uh, we also have, uh, what else do we have? Oh yes, all right, so this is important. So you see these two pins coming in here. This, These are coming from the shaft encoder, which is on the rear of the motors. Each of these motors has a shaft encoder. And the, you, you'll know that if you saw the first part of the video. So this motor is actually outputting 
uh, pulse every time um, the shaft encoder inside ticks. Um, so these two pins, which are the Arduino's interrupt pins, pin number two and three, the digital pins, digital pins two and three uh, are the interrupt pins on the Arduino Uno. And so from the shaft encoder, we're getting one interrupt each for each motor. And uh, we're keeping count of those ticks as they happen. And so we can then relate that directly to the shaft position, which uh, you see marked here with these little uh, flags. All right, so that's the uh, setup. Let me tell you a little bit more about these potentiometers over here. Okay, so what, what we have here is four potentiometers, okay? And one of them is for the declination axis. And all this does is it just adjusts the PWM, PWM level to the declination axis by turning this knob here. Um, and you'll see the effect of that in the software. Whereas, so that's that's for the declination motor. So for that's this that's for this motor. All you have to do is just turn this uh, potentiometer, and um, so you can think of this entire setup as kind of manual control. Um, um, so it's one step closer to working through the computer, but over here it's just completely manual. So I can adjust the speed of the declination motor either left or right with this potentiometer and that will turn this motor accordingly. And with these three potential motors, I intend to control the RA axis, which is this one. So you're probably wondering, well, why do you need uh, just one for the declination motor and three of these for the RA motor? Well, controlling this RA motor is actually a little bit more complicated than the declination motor because, well, if you've seen that uh, the video I made on, um, you know, the tutorial and the motivation, the theory part of this whole uh, um, hardware project, you'll notice the declination motor, once you set it to a particular star or, a, or the sun or the moon or whatever it is you're trying to track, after that, for the duration of your tracking, this declination motor pretty much is not moved at all. You don't need to move this at all. You just need to move it initially to, to get the object into your sights. And after that, this doesn't move at all. So that's why you just need speed control on this. And uh, depending whether you want to move the declination north or south, you just adjust this motor and uh, this knob and that will happen over there. But uh, the right ascension is a little bit different. You have to track at a very, very specific rate. So once you bring the right ascension axis also onto your object which you're tracking, you then need to make sure that the, the right ascension shaft, which is this one, this shaft, okay, um, this shaft then has to move at the exact same angular rate as the star or the sun or whatever it is you're trying to to track and photograph or observe or whatever you're trying to do with that. So this motor is a lot more complicated than this motor. And um, so that's why we have uh, three dials here and they're marked. So one of them is marked PWM. The other one just shows a pulse-like uh, image. So this is uh, what I will call pulse width and uh, the other one is just, it's, you can see it's written over there, off. And uh, this actually determines the pulse duration. So the PWM level, the pulse width, and the pulse duration. And each of these have a different meaning inside the circuitry and in the software. And uh, I'll show you what I mean uh, as to why I've used these three potentiometers to control one motor. All right, so... Um, before we go into the software, let me just uh, explain these motors in a little bit more detail um, so that it becomes clear when I show you the software. This one is pretty obvious, this declination motor. All that's doing is just ad basically adjusting, if you think about it sim in simple words, it's just adjusting the voltage on the, uh, the declination motor input pins. That's all it's doing. These three are slightly different. And um, before I show you the software and I sh demonstrate the whole thing to you, let me just uh, explain with some paper um, and a diagram how these three uh, potentiometers work. Okay, so let's talk about uh, these four potentiometers and what they do. All right, so let's start off with the declination potentiometer, okay? And uh, this knob, all it does is just adjust the PWM, so pulse width modulation, um, you know, the, 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 the value that's being fed to the, to the two motors, to the declination motor rather. Okay, so if you know how pulse width modulation works, um, let me just draw a graph here. So this is voltage, right? 
and uh, I'm going to say this is 12 volts at maximum because that's my input voltage that I'm feeding to the system. Okay. Now, if I feed a PWM of this using this motor, right? So if I feed a value of 50%, what that means is that um, this is what the voltage signal to the motor is going to look like. Okay. Which means it's going to be getting 12 volts 50% of the time, right? So 50% of the time it's going to get 12 volts and 50% of the time it's going to get 0 volts. So effectively, the, from the point of view of the motor, it's just getting 6 volts, 6 volts, right? Now, if I reduce this by turning this dial, now I reduce it down to say maybe 10%. In that case, right? So if I look at the motor again, the motor volt, the voltage is going to the motor. Again, it's at 12 volts, the maximum. But now it's only getting that 12 volts for 10% of the time. So this is 10%, right? And then it stays blank, right? Gets 10%, and then it stays, goes back to zero. Gets 10%, and then goes back to zero. And then this just keeps repeat, repeating. So this is 10% of the time the 12 volts is being applied, and 90% of the time the 12 volts is not being applied. So as far as the motor is concerned, it's only getting 1.2 volts, uh, which is uh, which works out to 10% of the input voltage which is 12 volts. So that's how pulse width modulation works and um, it's how you achieve speed control in a motor. So even though you're actually just turning on and off this 12 volt supply that's uh, your input supply to the controller is 12 volts. So you're just turning it on and off but you're doing it in a way that kind of tricks the motor into thinking it's either getting 1.2 volts or it's getting 6 volts or if I turn the the uh, PWM duty cycle to 100%, then just that 12 volts, which is here, the 12 volts just be on all the time. So as far as the motor is concerned, it's getting 100% of 12 volts, uh, which is 12 volts. And so the mass motor would go really fast if you if you did this. Okay, so that's pulse width modulation. And uh, if you don't quite understand that, I encourage you to look up PWM and how are the uh, how to control PWM pins with an Arduino. Um, it's actually quite simple and it's a uh, it's a standard method of controlling the speed of a motor um, using a you know a constant voltage source which is 12 volts you can actually control the speed of the motor so now if I just draw for you rather than this actual output that the pin is actually giving to the motor let me just show you what the motor would see as far as the motor is concerned um, it sees between 0 and 12 volts and as far as the motor is concerned, it's just either getting 12 volts, sometimes it's dropping down to zero, so in this case the motor would stop, sometimes it's getting 6 volts, sometimes it's getting maybe 3 volts, and sometimes it's, it's just stopping again and then going up to 12 volts. So as far as the motor is concerned, this is what it sees, and this is how it actually um, it rotates. Thinking that it's getting tricked by this mechanism here of turning on and off this 12 volts in a particular duty cycle. In this case, it's 50%. In this case, it's 10%. In this case, it's 100%. Depending on how you actually turn this voltage on and off, as far as the motor is concerned, it thinks that it's receiving different voltages. And so therefore, it just translates that into different speeds of rotation. So in this case, it would be thinking that it's getting 12 volts. In this case, it would think that it's getting 6 volts. Here it might think it's getting, I don't know, maybe 4 volts. And uh, over here it might be getting 12 volts again. So this is just how the motor will then rotate as if it's been fed with voltages like this. But actually what's happening internally is it's happening like this. This 12 volt is being switched on and off at different duty cycles in order to, to trick the motor into thinking it's being fed voltages like this. So that's basically PWM. Okay. Uh, and that's how the declination axis would, would work, okay? Um, just speed control of the motor. But for the RA axis, you need to actually um, track the exact angular rate that the star is moving at, the star that you're trying to track with your telescope. And so that's why I've given these three um, uh, potentiometers in order to do that, okay? So let's just flip the page and talk about these three motors okay so the three motors here are PWM on the left and uh, then there's the 
pulse width in the center, what I call pulse width, and the last one is the pulse delay, right? Like, like before, the PWM actually is just presenting a duty cycle, okay? So it's maybe 50% on, 50% off, right? So this is 12 volts, and it's on 50% of the time, off 50% of the time, depending on what value I want to put here, okay? So that's exactly the same as the declination motor or any PWM control motor, 50% on and 50% off, right? So as far as the motor is concerned, it thinks it's getting 6 volts, because you're getting 12 volts 50% of the time on and off. So the motor thinks you're getting 12 volt. Now, it's getting 6 volts, sorry. Now, what I do with the next potentiometer is this pulse width, is I decide for how long is the 6 volts going to be applied. Okay? And with this pulse delay, so this is pulse width. And with this pulse delay, okay, what I'm doing is I'm deciding how long is the motor actually going to be off for. So this is the motor off time, right? And then the motor comes back on again here at this time for the width duration. Then it goes off for the delay duration here. And then again it comes on for the width duration. So why am I doing it like this? Why am I just, so in other words, you can just see this is kind of just an extended version of PWM control, right? Why would I do it this way? Well, the thing is, supposing I wanted the motor to turn really, really slow, okay? The RA motor, um, which is over here. Right? So I wanted this shaft to turn really, really slowly, okay? The only way I could otherwise achieve it is by feeding it a very low PWM signal or in other words, trick the motor into thinking it's getting a very low voltage. But that won't work, you see. You need a minimum voltage in order for this motor to actually start turning. Because it's got gears inside, there's obviously, there's, you know, there's, there's inertia of mass, there's friction, there's all kinds of things. So if I wanted to turn this at the slowest possible rate, and I fed a really, really low PWM value in here, this shaft is not going to turn. Um, so... I can't do it through just PWM, you know. I have to pulse this motor. So what I'm trying to achieve here is pulsing this motor, right? I could pulse it at 12 volts if I wanted to. You know, if, if it was driving a heavy load, say, you know, a huge telescope was attached and, uh, you know, it was, for argument's sake, let's say there was a huge telescope attached to this and I needed a lot of current, a lot of high voltage in order to move that telescope, I would have to apply the full 12 volts. But I don't want to apply the 12 volts all the time, you see, because if I did it all the time, the motor would start turning fast. So I want to pulse the motor. And it's for achieving this pulsing effect that I've had to add these two additional parameters, the width of the pulse and the delay between pulses. And so therefore, that's the reason for the ad additional two potentiometers over here. Okay, so, and when I come to the software, you'll quickly understand how this actually works. So what this is actually achieving is just pulsing of this RA motor, okay, according to a given pulse width and a given delay time here. So there's a pulse width, there's a delay time, and there's a PWM value for each pulse. Um, so that's why we have the three motors. It'll become a little clearer as we as we move along and uh, I demonstrate the software, I show you the software, and, and I show you the actual shaft turning. Uh, it'll become clear to you why I've chosen this approach. And uh, if you ask me, I think this is possibly the only approach, the way to do this, um, to achieve this RA motor uh, turning. Okay, so let's uh, look at the software and uh, see a demonstration. There's the declination and the RA motors, uh, they're functioning. And uh, I won't go through the code uh, in detail. Uh, I just want to uh, just show you how it's working and um, I'll obviously have to make more modifications and things like that, but uh, once uh, once everything is in, in, in order and I have a fully functioning system, then I'll I'll probably go into more detail in the code and, uh, um, you know, more thorough video on just the code itself. Okay. Um, so, I'm creating both the motors here, and I'm using this class which I've written, so the encoder motor uh, class, and so all the 
the functions of the motor and uh, you know how they keep track of their shaft position and things like that is all encapsulated here in this in this class and that's just abstracted away so um, if you were to download this once it's ready fully uh, you you really don't need to know about uh, how any of this works because uh, it's all abstracted away as long as you just include the class in your main file uh, you should have a functioning encoder motor okay so we create two encoder motors one for the declination and one for the RA um, these are the four potentiometers I'm talking about okay so they're connected so these four potentiometers and they're connected to um, analog pins 2 3 4 and 5 okay uh, and I showed you that connection and um, I don't uh, okay so the entire program runs in four modes okay so the first is a command run a command pulse looping and manual and what this means is basically um, well I haven't really completed all these what I'd like to show you today is just the manual mode actually uh, and that's manual control using these four uh, potentiometers and the other three modes that you see here um, so looping is actually just a test mode so forget about that for now but these two command run and command pulse will actually be the modes that I program to uh, obey commands coming through the serial interface from a computer so these are not yet fully implemented um, but they will basically be some kind of variation of this manual mode so I just want to show you the manual mode right now and uh, these will happen eventually slowly okay uh, in the setup code we set the interrupts um, with the interrupt pins that I showed you so one interrupt pin for the shaft counter of the declination motor and one interrupt pin for the uh, input from the RA motors uh, shaft counter okay um, here we attach the interrupts to their uh, respective interrupt functions, interrupt uh, routines. Okay. Um, debugging information is here. All right. So printing debugging information. So either if it's on a computer control, it will go directly in Python without any comments. And uh, on this serial monitor, we will uh, see this kind of uh, comments. Okay, so right now I'm printing to Python. I'm going to change that and say false. Let's see what happens if I upload. Ah, okay, so it's happening. I'm just going to change this to print line so that we get a new line every time. Let's upload this again. Okay. Uh, this is fine so I hope you can see this all right let's go further down um, and let's just get to the part where we do manual control because that's that's what I want to demonstrate today the manual control part uh, so here we are um, every time I wanted to accept a manual control command I'm going to just use this code 34 this is just some number I thought of randomly so I will enter here 34 and then I will set so I'll set the potentiometers and then enter here into the serial device 34 and then the, the system will read these um, uh, potentiometer values and then act on them okay so the first thing we want to do is okay so the declination motor is quite simple actually I'm just going to set this to Dec PWM. So whatever is the value on the declination PWM uh, potentiometer, which is this one, uh, the declination motor will just start turning at that speed. All right, and uh, the RA motor will pulse. And I showed you why I needed to pulse the motor because I want this motor to have a very high torque to be able to turn a heavy telescope. But if I were to just uh, try and obtain that torque by increasing its voltage at its terminals it would just keep turning forever at a very fast rpm which is not what I want I want it to go very slowly but each pulse or each little um, you know turn little tiny angular turn it makes I want that to be of a high torque but I want those to happen slowly so I, I'll just show you what the, you'll get it uh, pretty easily uh, you'll understand what I'm saying uh, quite easily once I demonstrate okay so let's look at the serial output and um, 
what you're seeing here is the RA speed 0, RA tick rate 0, shaft counter 0, declination motor speed 0, tick rate 0 and shaft counter 0. Okay. So let's just open this up a bit more and I just want to, so since there's a lot of information being printed here, let me just see if I can uh, reduce the amount of s this physical space there because I have a feeling um, otherwise there won't be enough space to see everything so I'll just shaft count I'll cut this down to shaft count cut this also down to shaft count uh, I'll just make this TK rate make this uh, TK rate um, yeah okay let's upload now okay so now I'm going to turn on the 12 volt supply um, to the to the motor driver all right and i'm now going to all right so i just want you to, to pay attention to the declination motor now you can see it here okay and so that's just turning at a constant rate based on this potentiometer so if i want to change that value let's say i just turn uh, I want to make it go a little faster or slower, so I'll change it this way, and then I'll give the command 34, and you can see the declination motor is now turning at a different rate. Okay, so all this potentiometer does is turn this motor at different speeds. So let's say I wanted to turn in the opposite direction, I would uh, at maximum rate, so I would turn this potentiometer all the way down to zero. Okay, give the command 34. And then you see now it's turning at its maximum speed in the opposite direction. Okay, so let's say I wanted to slow it down a little now, but still have it going this way. Uh, do this, turn the potentiometer dial. So now you see it's turning a little slower, and you can make it turn even slower still. So that's turning even slower now, and you want it to go even slower. Well, it's gone the other way now, so it's turning in the opposite direction. So if I turn it like this, I should be able to get it to an almost a stop. There you go. So now the PWM value on the declination motor is actually so low that there's not enough torque being generated to turn that shaft. Okay. Um, now let's look at the RA motor. I hope you can see that. Let me just check my OBS studio. Yes, so you can see the RA motor here now. This is the this is the important one. This is the important one. You can see the RA motor, and what this is actually doing. You can see this. It's actually pulsing. Can you see that? So that's what I want to achieve. I want to be able to achieve pulses on this motor so that I can have. And while it's pulsing on, it's actually doing so at whatever PWM value I uh, set on this. Uh, potentiometer. So the, the 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 obvious advantage of doing it this way is I can have a very very high torque for a very short time, and then delay as long as I want to. So the telescope is actually moving very slowly, incrementally, rather than at a steady rate. And if I try to achieve this slow moving of the shaft, which is what's happening here, the slow moving. If I try to do it by just using only one um, uh, potentiometer for PWM. I'm, I could end up with a situation like is right now in the declination motor where there could be some PWM current value going in here but it's just not enough to turn the shaft. So let me demonstrate this a little bit more. Let me um, increase the, the pulse width with the center and reduce the pulse delay with um, the pulse delay potentiometer and uh, let's give the command 34 and see what happens. You can see now that it's obviously turning much faster because there's a lot more of time duration when this PWM value is actually on um, with this potentiometer and it's off for a much shorter time. Let's say I wanted to now reduce the pulses, okay? Reduce the, the, the angular you know turn, but I still wanted to maintain this particular voltage level. So I will now turn the potentiometer quite low. 
So this is the on potentiometer, the pulse width potentiometer. So I'm turning that low and let's see what happens. You see the pulses now? Much smaller pulses, but the PWM, the, the, the torque applied to the shaft for each of those pulses is the same and that's controlled by this PWM motor. So I'm getting a high torque uh, sort of, uh, you know, jerk on the shaft, um, but the shaft is still turning very slowly. Uh, which is exactly what I wanted to achieve. So if I wanted the shaft now to, uh, you know, if I felt that this torque was enough to turn the telescope or whatever it was, and I wanted to now make this thing, uh, make the shaft go slower, what I'm going to do is increase the delay on the delay potentiometer, all right, and then give it the command 34 to read the values. Now watch what happens. You see, it's still pulsing. It's still pulsing, but now that I've increased this delay, it's pulsing a lot slower. So again, what I'm achieving here is very high torque jerks on the shaft, but the overall shaft RPM is much, much slower now. And all I've got to do now is use this potentiometer and this one. So the pulse width and the pulse delay, and play around with these with a the telescope attached to this motor to see what combination will be able to track an object perfectly. So this might just be too slow. I have no idea because uh, there's also a reduction gearing in the telescope. Um, but when I play around with these two, so let me just show you that again. So I'm now I'm reducing the delay. I'm not changing uh, the pulse width, but I am reducing the delay slightly. So we should get a much faster uh, rotation rate. Let's have a look. There you see. Let's turn this down a little bit more. And so let's get a very small delay now so I'll, I'll turn the delay knob down almost completely and uh, let's see what happens you can hear it pulsing I hope you can hear that let me just bring the mic closer to the motor and you'll be able to hear it pulsing now that's not a continuous turn that's happening it's actually pulsing and you can make that out let me increase the delay slightly so it's a little bit more obvious There you go. So now I've increased the delay slightly and you can see the pulsing uh, is a lot more um, apparent now. But the big advantage here is I'm doing this at whatever torque or this. So this is PWM which translates directly into voltage on the motor terminals and voltage on the motor terminals translate directly into torque of the shaft applied on the shaft. Which means I can now have a high torque and still a slow RPM and that's or an RPM which I can control uh, by the combination of these two potentiometers and that's exactly what we're trying to achieve so that when we turn the telescope when we put this on the telescope mount finally we have a high torque shaft but we're able to control its speed with these two potentiometers so that's the setup right now and um, I've just made this video just to demonstrate this this feature and uh, the code is quite interesting actually so once everything is ready and um, uh, you know the software is fully ready I will make a much more detailed video on the code alone uh, but right now for me the next step I think would probably be to start fitting these uh, motors now onto the telescope um, and I do a little bit of um, uh, uh, physical work here this uh, fabrication work uh, so that uh, these motors are fitted onto the telescope and then we can act onto the telescope mount and we can actually put a telescope or a camera on it and start seeing what combination of these two motors can turn a telescope still or rather what combination of these three potentiometers uh, will have enough torque to turn the telescope so that will be decided by the PWM motor and at the same time still move the shaft slow enough to be able to track an object in the sky uh, and that will be decided by these two potentiometers. So I hope that's clear and uh, you were able to understand this little demonstration that I've uh, just uh, shown you. Um, stay tuned and uh, I'll get back to you uh, with the next video once the two motors are mounted on the telescope and uh, the software is a little bit more refined. Thank you for watching.